الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى آداب تعليمه آداب تعليمه his etiquettes his etiquettes while he is teaching his etiquettes while he is teaching and uh, educating and cultivating his students يعني المدرس آداب المدرس في تعليمه لطلابه the manners and the etiquettes and the behavior of the teacher while while he is teaching and no doubt this is from the most uh, important chapters to study and to learn specifically for the those who are involved in teaching and those who have students and likewise those who are involved in learning and those who have teachers or those who are going to proceed upon that way they will all benefit from learning these characteristics and traits and uh, this is from the most beneficial knowledge in general in this manner to learn the attributes and the characteristics of the people to learn the attributes and the characteristics of the righteous and the pious and the successful and to learn the attributes and the characteristics and the characteristics of the the evil and uh, the foul and the despicable and the failures and to learn the attributes and characteristics of those who pretend to be righteous but in their hearts they are filthy and foul and in this manner our lord subhanahu wa ta'ala has began his book in surah al-baqarah mentioning the attributes and characteristics of the righteous and the true believers and then after that following that up with mentioning the, the attributes and traits of of the disbelievers and then after that because of the severity uh, of the affair and the danger of this particular type of a person, Allah, he mentioned a number of verses back to back with regards to the attributes of the hypocrites, of the hypocrites. So this is something very important and very beneficial in general, to learn the attributes of the people in order to identify them and to know them, and from the signs that are apparent from their statements and their actions and their manners and behavior. So likewise, the teacher, he has these manners as well, the one who is truthful and the one who is uh, sincere. And also the one who is insincere and not truthful, he has traits and characteristics as well. And as well the student. And as well the student. But here we, we benefit by learning these, those who are teachers, that, so that they can strive to, to abide by them. If they can check themselves and they can take themselves to account with regards to these attributes and characteristics. And if they see that they have some, they'll praise Allah and thank Him. And, and, and strive to, to maintain them and to perfect them. And if they see that they have any shortcomings in those affairs, then they will strive to rectify that. And they will strive to, to correct that for the sake of Allah. And likewise, those who are students, they will look. And uh, if they see those characteristics, those characteristics and, and traits, if they see those characteristics and traits and the ones that they learn from and that they admire and they benefit from, then they will praise and thank Allah. And they will hold fast to that particular teacher. And if they find something that is contrary to that, if it's something light, then they will work on trying to advise that particular teacher and to direct him and uh, to uh, inform him of these affairs in the, in the most gentle and kind uh, manner. And if there is something that is severe and the signs are in, in contrast in a great manner, then they will leave, they will leave them and they will find, they will find teachers who, who are not like that. They will find teachers who, who are not like that, who are not like that. So this is a, a, indeed a great benefit and a very important chapter, Adabu Ta'limihi, the etiquettes and the manners of the, of the teacher while he is teaching. He says now, At-ta'limuhu al-aslu alladhi bihi qiwamu al-deen alladhi bihi qiwamu al-deeni wa dunya wa bihi yu'manu immihaqi al-ilm. He says that teaching here, teaching, at ta'lim it means to teach and to educate. But also what is included in this understanding likewise at tarbiyah يعني التعليم والتدريس والتربية والتوجيه والنص والإرشاد All of these ideas are included here to teach and to educate and to cultivate and to raise and to direct and to advise. This is the, this is the obligation and the right of the teacher. He says this is the fundamental foundations with regards to establishing the dunya, with regards to establishing the religion and the worldly life. With regards to establishing the religion, the religion and the worldly life by education. By education, because 
everything, it must be based upon knowledge and according to that which was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this does not come except by learning. As the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالْتَعَلُّمُ إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالْتَعَلُّمُ That knowledge is only by way of learning. So there must be education. There must be concern for learning and cultivation and uh, education and upbringing in the proper manner. He says this is the foundation and the fundamental principle with regards to establishing the religion and the worldly life. And in this manner likewise, uh, is safe. The knowledge is safe from being uh, being lost and being removed and being wiped out or being forgotten. That by teaching and carrying on this uh, this affair here of education and spreading the knowledge, then uh, the knowledge is safe from being uh, from being lost and from being uh, and being wiped out and the likes like this. He says, "What fit tanziri al hakim in the wise revelation." And he says in the wise revelation, meaning the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whenever Allah, he has taken the covenant with those who have been given the book, meaning the Jews and the Christians, specifically, specifically the people of knowledge from them, specifically the people of knowledge from them. And whenever Allah, he has taken the, he has taken the covenant and the bond with them, the agreement with them, that those, those who have been given the book, that they will clarify it to the people and they will not conceal it. That they will clarify it to the people and they will not conceal it. And uh, we know that, that they betrayed that trust. That the Jews specifically and likewise the Christians, they betrayed that trust. And they concealed much of that and they changed much, much of that. And they revealed that which is beneficial for them and their personal gains. And they concealed and hid that which was not beneficial for them. And the likes like this, and they change the words from its places, any for their own personal gains and benefit. And this is something known about the, the Jews specifically, that they distort the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the revelation that was given to them. And also they are all, they're known for concealing the knowledge, especially the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that was revealed in their book. So here Allah is mentioning to them that He had preferred them with knowledge and He had given them revelation and He had entrusted them to do this trust that they should clarify that and they should spread that knowledge and teach the people and not conceal any, anything from that. And not conceal anything from that. To clarify to the people and then to emphasize the importance of that clarification that they must likewise not conceal anything. They must not conceal anything. But, but they betrayed that. And in this here is a warning for the believers, those who have been given the Qur'an, the final revelation, and that those who have the virtue and the honor of being from the Ummah of the final Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that those who have knowledge from them, that they will bear that, that they will carry that book, and that they will clarify that to the people and they will not conceal anything. Rather, they will convey it in the same manner that it has reached them. And they will say the truth even if they are harmed because of that, or even if it's against their own souls. They will speak the truth and they will clarify that. As for the people of innovation and the people of desires and the people likewise who maybe they have knowledge but they're tried with whims and lusts of the worldly life and the, and the love for fame and position, then they have these traits of the Jews and the Christians and they will conceal the knowledge. And they will conceal the knowledge and they will reveal and clarify that which is beneficial for them and that which is not beneficial for them, they will hide that or they, they will misinterpret that or they, they will change that or they will find ways to have uh, principles and the likes that will go around that. And this is from the ways of Ahl al and those who and those who resemble them. And those, and those who resemble them. So the people of knowledge of this Ummah, they have to be firm and steadfast and carry that knowledge and clarify it to the people for the sake of Allah. And to, and to not conceal anything. Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi, rahimahullah wa ta'ala, he died in the 198. He said, Ahl hadithi yarwuna ma lahum wa ma alayhim. The people of hadith, the true scholars of the sunnah, they narrate that which is for them and against them. And they narrate, they narrate the narrations that have come to them as they have come. Wa ahl al ahwa la yarwuna illa ma lahum. And as for the people of desires and whims, they, don't, they do not narrate anything except for that is in their best interest and benefit except for that which is in their best interest and benefit. So this is the way of the people of desires and the people of, of whims, that they resemble the Jews in this affair and they conceal the knowledge. They conceal the knowledge. And we have the similar issues going on in these days likewise. There's individuals who they'll translate, but only they translate that which is beneficial for them and their group. 
and anything that comes from the same person of knowledge, from the same people of knowledge, from the same scholars, if it's not in accordance with their desires or aiding their position in their group, they will not translate it. They will not translate it. And this is from the resemblance of the people of whims and the people of desires who originally is from the resemblance of, of the Jews, of the Jews and the Christians. Because of this, Sufyan ibn Uyayna, rahimahullah ta'ala, likewise, he died in the year 198. He said, The one who is corrupted from our scholars. The one who is corrupted from our scholars. Meaning maybe he has knowledge, but his heart is corrupted by lusting and desiring and craving for the worldly life and position. Then he has a resemblance to the Jews. Because this is what overcome the Jews. The Jews, they're people of knowledge. They're people of the book. They're people of revelation, but they traded that and they sold that for a miserable gain and price of this life. They traded that and they hid that and they concealed that and they used that to gain the worldly life, to gain the worldly life. So likewise, those who are corrupted from this ummah who are ascribed to knowledge, they have a resemblance in this manner. And these are from their traits that they conceal the knowledge or that they only revealed the knowledge to the people that which is beneficial for them and their group, for them and their group. And likewise, he said, Rahimahullah, wa man fasada min ubadina falahu shabahum bin nasara. And whoever is corrupted and goes astray from our devout worshippers, then he has a resemblance to the Christians. A resemblance to the Christians. So the first group, those who have, th those from this ummah, who ascribe to knowledge, but they go astray because of lust and desires and preferring this worldly life and hoping for a, por a portion of this life or praise and fame, then they go astray in this manner like this, by concealing the knowledge and using it for their personal benefit. And they have a resemblance to the Jews. And they have a resemblance to the Jews. And as for those who are uh, from the devout worshippers, but they worship Allah upon ignorance, and they do not follow the sunnah of the Prophet, they follow innovations and whims, without any guidance or any proof of why they, they move, and why they pray in that manner, or why they worship Allah in that manner, or why they do that dhikr in that way, and the likes like this. They have no proof or evidence from the Quran or from the sunnah. They have a resemblance to, to the Christians, because they're the people of action, but they have no, they have no knowledge. So the Jews are people of knowledge without the proper action. And uh, the Christians, they're people of action without the proper knowledge. Without the, without the proper knowledge. So therefore they have gone astray. And those from this ummah who resemble them, they resemble them. They resemble them in that. And the one who is safe from that, he is the one who has the knowledge and he applies that and he abides by that. The one who is concerned with the knowledge and he applies that and he abides by that. And that's the wisdom of the teaching and the revelation of the book. So the people of knowledge, they have to, they have to clarify the affairs and not conceal or hide anything or cover up anything or deceive the people in any manner or in any way. With the knowledge. With the knowledge. Rather the author, he says, وَقَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمُ لِيُبَلِّقَ الشَّاهِدِ مِنْ كُمُ الْغَائِبِ He mentions now the narration of the Prophet صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ Likewise, that the one who is present, he must inform the one who is absent. The Messenger صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ He mentioned the likes of this narration on the, on the Hajjat al-Wada'a. Whenever there's a great multitude of people and he would say the likes of this affair, those who are here and present and they heard this knowledge, then they must inform the ones that you know that are not present. And if those who did not, uh, do not attend the gathering and the knowledge did not reach them, those who attended and they heard that knowledge, they must convey it to those after them. They must convey it to those after them. So this is also an indication of the obligation of this affair, that the knowledge, it must be conveyed. That the knowledge, it must be conveyed. So we see here now that the conveying the knowledge is from the most important affairs. And this was the occupation and the function of the prophets and the messengers to convey the knowledge. To convey the knowledge. Whether it goes in the hearts of the people or not, this is in the hands of Allah alone. But the prophets and messengers and those who inherited their inheritance from the people of knowledge, this is their function and their obligation. To clarify the truth for the sake of Allah and to not conceal anything. And to, not to, and to not hide anything. So the author, he says, يَجِبُ عَلَى الْمُعَلِّمِ أَنْ يَقْسِدَ بِتَعْلِيمِهِ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى وَلَّا يَجْعَلُهُ وَسِيلَةً إِلَى غَرَضٍ دُنْيَوِي وَلَّا يَجْعَلُهُ وَسِيلَةً إِلَى غَرَضٍ دُنْيَوِي لِأَنَّ مَا كَانَ خَالِصًا كَانَ مُسْتَمِرًا غَضًا فِي كُلِهِينَ وَمَا كَانَ لِغَرَضٍ زَارَ عِنْدَ أَظَافَرِ بِهِ فَفَاتَ so he says now it's an obligation for the teacher that he intends by his teaching the face of Allah. Meaning he is intending the pleasure of Allah and the reward from Allah alone and hoping that his actions will be accepted and the hereafter he will see the face of Allah truly. And in the hereafter he will be admitted into paradise and be from those who will see the face of Allah truly. This is the reason why he's teaching. This is the reason. This is the reason why he is teaching. So this is the first and foremost. And this has proceeded likewise. He's repeating this affair to clarify 
the importance, to clarify the importance that the teaching of the teacher, it will be considered upright and noble whenever sincerity for the sake of Allah. And then based upon this, he will have the reward that has been promised from this affair. He would have the reward that has been promised from this affair. He's indicating some of that. He says because, uh, and, and he, should not, he should not make his teaching a means to reach any, any worldly goal. That his teaching should not be, he should not intend by his teaching to obtain or have a means to reach any worldly, any worldly goal or any worldly aim. And he mentioned before details of that. Not fame or not to have a lot of followers or not to have any wealth or not to have any position. Any of the worldly goals. He should not intend any of that. If anything comes from that, for example, he gets position, or for example, the people honor him, or for example, the, he becomes well-known, or for example, the, his knowledge is spread, and he becomes famous, and the likes like this. This is all a favor from Allah and a blessing if he's truthful. But the person of knowledge, he's not seeking that. This is not in his heart, he's not looking for that. So if the people praise him after he's being sincere and for the knowledge that he's spreading, this is Ajiru Bushra al Mu'min. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is a hastened glad tidings for the believer. I mean, he's being given glad tidings of his great effort and that uh, his uh, good that he's doing is accepted in this life before the hereafter. This is a sign of goodness for him if he's truly sincere. The point is that his heart is not looking for these affairs. His heart is not looking for these affairs. So if they come to him while he's not looking for them, they will not harm him. They will not harm him. But if they enter into his heart now, they can corrupt his heart. So this is something that is, that is very, very dangerous. This is something that is very, very dangerous. The people of not, as I mentioned about this, the obligation of purifying the attention, especially for the teacher. Especially for the teacher that, that, this, requires, that this requires great mujahada wa muhasaba. Mujahada to nafs wa muhasaba to ha. A person, he has to strive against the soul to purify his intention and to go over and to review his intention and to check this affair, the teacher specifically, and likewise the student of knowledge as well. And likewise the student of knowledge as well. It has been narrated from Sulaiman ibn Dawood al Hashimi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he died in the year 219. He said, he said, maybe I will narrate one narration. And I have an intention for, the, for this narration. Meaning I have a proper and a good intention for this narration. He said, after, maybe I will, after I start narrating part of the narration, my intention will change. In, the, in one narrate, he's narrating one hadith. In the beginning, he has a good intention for the sake of Allah, seeking the pleasure of Allah. But before he's finished narrating the whole hadith, his intention already changed. His intention already changed. So he says, He says, so therefore, one intention, uh, therefore one narration, it requires many intentions. Many intentions. And this can only be found by someone who makes mujahada and makes muhasaba. And they have knowledge of the soul. And they have knowledge of the intention. Likewise, it has been narrated from Yahya bin Abi Kathir. Rahimahullah, he died in the year 132. He mentioned uh, that, uh, he said, That you have to learn the intention because it is more severe than the action. It is more severe than the action. And we've seen before the statement of Sufyan al-Thawri, Rahimahullah, مَا عَلَجْتُ شَيْئًا أَشَدَّ عَلَيَّ مِنْ مِنْ نِيَّتِي فَإِنَّهَا تَتَقَلَبُ عَلَيَّ I never treated anything more severe than my intention because it's always changing on me. Some of the people of Nadas, likewise from the Sadaf, they would say that uh, I would fight myself against, uh, I would fight myself to try to remove the riyah and the showing off from my heart, and it will grow back in another form. And it will grow back in another form. Maybe, may, meaning, maybe a person, he would check himself and he would look deep into his soul and into his heart and try to remove these affairs. Whenever his heart is, uh, is the devotion of his heart is turning to the world, it's, turning, it's supposed to go up to Allah. The heart is supposed to go up to Allah in hope and in love. And, and desire, hoping for the reward from Allah. But sometimes if a person is not careful, his heart will start to do, direct to a person or direct to an individual or to, direct to a situation that he's hoping for in the likes like this. And his heart will turn in that way in devotion and some type of hope. And he's directing some of the raqba or the raja to, to the creation like this. So a person, he has to be able to recognize that. So if someone strives, maybe he will realize that. But he's telling us now that he would strive and he would realize that and then it wouldn't be long and uh, show, that he would overcome his desire in this affair. He maybe, for example, he has a problem showing off in Salat, 
Shaitan is whispering to him specifically in Salat around a specific person. And then he finds himself and finds himself and finds himself and then it goes away. And next thing you know, it pops up in the khutbah. Or next thing you know, it pops up when he's teaching. Or next thing you know, it pops up when he's writing the, reading the Quran. Or whenever he's doing this. Or whenever he's doing that like this. So he, the, the intention, he will fight it and it will go away. And then it will come back in another avenue or another, another, in another aspect. So this affair requires great, great mujahad and truthful, truthful, truthfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And truthfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, likewise, it has been narrated by Abda ibn Abi Lubada. Rahimahullah, he died in the year 127. He says, Aqrabu minhum. Aamanuhum minhum. He said, the people who are closest to showing off and to wanting to be seen and to be heard are the ones who feel safest from it. The ones who feel safest from it. The people who feel safe that they're, 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 my worship is for the sake of Allah. I'm sincere and I'm pious. And they think like this. And they do not think that they have deficiency in their, in their worship. They think that their, their ikhlas and their intention is purely for the sake of Allah. And this is what they believe about their self. Then they're the closest ones to falling and to showing off. They're the closest ones to falling and to showing off. Aqrabu nasi ila riya amanuhum minhum. The one who is closest to falling and to showing off is the one who feels safest from it. From that. So a believer, he will not feel safe from that. He will not feel safe from that. Ibrahim السلام, he said, Oh my Lord, save me and my children from worshiping the, the idols. He was afraid of shirk. So if he's afraid of major shirk, and the Prophet وسلم, he said, They said, وسلم, The thing that I fear most for you is the hidden shirk. Is the hidden shirk. And the Ibrahim السلام, he's afraid of the major shirk. For him and his children. Then how about the issue of the minor shirk? Even more severe. So this requires mujahada. And it requires for a person to strive and to be truthful in his faith with Allah. May Allah give us success. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his book, Madari Jasari Isarikin. When he's speaking about manzilat al-ikhlas. The status or the station of sincerity and the purity of intention. He mentioned some of the statements of, of the salaf. And from them he said, Man shahida fi ikhlasihi al-ikhlas. Ihtaja ikhlasuhu ila al-ikhlas. He said, whoever witnesses in his own sincerity that he's sincere, and he sees his own sincerity to be sincere, then his sincerity needs to be purified. Then his sincerity needs to be purified. Meaning that if he thinks that he's sincere, and uh, the likes like this, this is a sign that he has a deficiency. Because in any case, the sincerity is a favor from Allah, and you cannot be sincere if Allah makes you sincere. Huh? If Allah makes you sincere. إِلَّا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ Al-Mukhlasin, the ones whom Allah has chosen and given them sincerity, and given them sincerity. So, so a person he cannot be sincere except if Allah he makes him sincere. So then, if he's truly sincere, he will realize that that's from Allah, that's from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and he will humble himself before Allah and realize that that's the favor of Allah, and still know that he has shortcomings and deficiencies. So he will not say, Alhamdulillah, I'm sincere. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, niyati salihah. My heart is good. Like this. This is some of the statements that maybe the awam they would say, but they don't know the reality of what's behind that. This is a type of deception from the devil. So the people of knowledge and the teachers specifically, they have to strive against their soul with regards to this affair. With regards to this affair. He mentioned uh, the reason behind this because the one who does it sincerely for the sake of Allah, the action that's done sincerely for the sake of Allah, it will continue. It will continue. Yes, the mirror and it will continue proper and well. You need the reward of that and the benefit of that. As for the one who did an action, who did an action, and then he intended by way of that action, the worldly gain, a worldly gain. Whenever that worldly gain is obtained, that action is finished. That action is finished. Like those first three. Huh? Though the first three, that the, night, the fire will be ignited by way of them. One of them, a person of knowledge. Huh? One of them a person of knowledge. The, the blessings of Allah will be made known to him and he will confess to that. And then he will say, what did you do with him? He will say, ta'alamtu al-ilmu alamtuhu fiqh. I, I, learned, now I learned the knowledge and I taught it for your sake. Ta'alamtu al-ilmu wa alamtuhu fiqh. Wa qara'tu al-Qur'an fiqh. Like this in some wordings and some narrations. I learned the knowledge and taught it for your sake. And then it will be said to him, kithabta, you're lying. You're lying. Ta'alamta or alamta li you call alim. You 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 only learned and you taught in order for it to be said that you are a scholar and to get the praise and the status. Wa qad qil, and it was said, fa fa umi rabihi fa yushabu ala wajhi fa yulqa fi nahr. 
And at that time, it will be commanded and he will be drug on his face and cast into the hellfire in disgrace. Meaning that he got what he intended. The, the reward he got, he, that's what he's working for, and that's what he got. The benefit of that deed, the benefit of that deed is finished whenever he gets his reward. So this is what he's saying here. This is the meaning of, of this benefit. He says, and he, that, that whenever he does it for another worldly affair, then, uh, then uh, he will get what he, he has intended and the, and the issue is over. Ali Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he died in the year 179. That he said, rahimahullah, that, that which is done for the sake of Allah, it will continue and it will not stop. And that which is done for other than the sake of Allah, then it will, it will, it will be cut off and it will not continue. It will be cut off and not continue. So a person who does a righteous deed for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, then that reward will continue with that. That reward will continue. He will have that whenever he meets Allah. And if that action that he does affects others in a good manner, then that will continue as well. That will continue as well if he was truthful with Allah. If he was truthful with Allah. If he was not. If he was insincere, teaching the people. Maybe many people benefited from him. But he was not sincere. He was looking for something else. The praises of the people. The reward that, that, that he gets from those people who benefited will not come back to him. Rather, he will get what he had intended. And every individual, he would have what he has intended. So again, here, this issue of the intention is very, is very important. So the author now, he's indicating now to the virtue of knowledge. To the virtue of knowledge and the status of knowledge. The status of teaching and educating the people. And that from the benefit of that is the preservation of the knowledge. And in spreading the knowledge, the benefit, yani, it, it becomes widespread and encompassing, and, and encompassing the ummah. So likewise, the reward for this individual, it will continue. The reward for this individual will continue. So whenever a, a person of knowledge, a, teacher's, a teacher, for example, he's aware of this affair, and he knows that if he's sincere, and if he's truthful, and he spreads the good that he knows, and people benefit from him, and the knowledge that he has, that he has been blessed with and that was bestowed upon him. He spreads that and others benefit from that as well, that he has the reward of that, that he has the reward of that. The people of not as they make the example of the one who taught a young man or a young girl, a little boy or a little girl, the Fatiha. And then maybe that little boy or that little girl will grow to be 40, 50, 60 years old. And they'll recite the Fatiha their whole life. How many times a day in the obligation prayer? 17 times a day in the obligatory prayer. Every time that they recite that Fatiha, then the one who taught them that will have a reward. The one who taught them that would have a reward. So some of the people of knowledge, they would say, you should not let anybody beat you to teach in your own child the Fatiha. You should not let anyone precede you to teach in your own child the Fatiha, so that you will be the one to reap the reward and the benefit of that. So this is an example of that. This is an example of that. The likes of these deeds here, the righteous and the good deeds that uh, affect others. The righteous and the good deeds that a person, he does himself, that affects others in a good way, they consider that to be al hayat al thaniya al hayat al thaniya the second life. So a person, so long as he's alive, he's working. If he's doing righteous deeds, then righteous deeds are coming in his scale and come and, and recorded for his, in his favor in his book. But whenever he dies, If a person dies, then his deeds are cut off, as the Prophet وسلم, he said, except for three. Except for three, and from them, ilmun yuntafa'u bihi, knowledge, that is left behind that people benefit from, that people benefit from. So this is his second life. This is his second life, meaning that this person, he'll be in his grave and everyone who benefited from him and his knowledge and his direction and his guidance and the likes like this, and he benefited him from him directly, benefited from him directly, directly from his knowledge, or if he leaves behind books, also from his knowledge, or even if it's indirectly, maybe somebody saw an individual who's praying and he's praying properly and he learned how to pray like that or he has noble manners and he benefited from him either by learning from him or by looking at him and taking him as a role model or benefiting from some advice that he had or whatever the case may be or if he left behind some beneficial knowledge whether he wrote that himself or he paid for that and provided that and the likes like this, all of this would be considered from his second life and he will continue to have the reward of that while he's in his grave and the good deeds will continue to come to him and while he's in his grave. So therefore, it's very important to be, to be diligent about benefiting the people. And from the most beloved slaves to Allah Azza wa Jal are those who are most beneficial to his slaves. The most beloved slaves to Allah Azza wa Jal are those who are most beneficial to his slaves. They perfect the, the worship and the right of Allah to the best of their ability. And likewise, they're good and nice and kind to his creation. 
and they benefit them as well. And the one who benefits the creation, Allah will benefit him in a great manner. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, he referred to the second life uh, in his book. And whenever he mentioned in his statement, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نُحْيِ الْمَوْتَى وَنَكْتُبُ مَا قَدَّمُوا وَآثَارَهُمْ وَآثَارَهُمْ That indeed we will bring the dead back to life and we write that which they have sent forward. And from their life, where they are alive. وَآثَارَهُمْ And their traces. And their traces. And the effects that they left behind. The people of not as they say, وَآثَارَهُمْ يعني آثَارَهُمْ so whatever they leave behind from good, that's likewise written. If somebody had a good effect on somebody and they continue upon that goodness and that goodness continues to benefit people after they die, that good is written for them. And likewise, if a person is upon evil or a foul way and he affected people in a foul and a bad way and that evil continued after his death, what it will be continued. The, the, the evil deeds will be continued to be recorded in his scale. Will be continue to be recorded in his scale, what he other billah. So this is a uh, uh, very important and likewise a great benefit and clarification of the virtue of dawah and teaching, the virtue of dawah and teaching. So whenever a person he is reminded of these affairs, the virtue of dawah and the reward that he will have, this will be from the greatest means to encourage him to be patient and to bear the harms and the difficulty in that, to bear the harms and the difficulty uh, of seeking knowledge if he's a student, because the virtue likewise is very similar. It's very similar. And also the one who is a teacher, he will be able to bear the harms, to bear the difficulty uh, to, of pre preparing the lesson and re researching and sitting down in front of the people and going through all these hardships and difficulties that, that is required to be, uh, to be a teacher and to fulfill the right of that. And he will be able to bear that burden by being reminded of the great virtue of this affair and that which he's hoping from the reward of Allah Azza wa Jalla. And that which he's hoping from the reward of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So now he says, uh, He said, and he should not, the teacher, he should not prohibit from teaching anyone because he does not have a correct intention. But rather, it is hoped that his intention will become good. It's not, it's not allowed for him yeah, to, 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 to not teach somebody any out of claim that that person does not have a good intention any in seeking knowledge and seeking knowledge rather it's hope for him that he will he will have a good intention that the, that the good intention will come to him he said he said it may be in the beginning for those beginner students it's difficult and hard for them to have the correct intention for them to have the correct intention or for them to rectify their intention so by forbidding or, or resisting uh, from teaching him, from teaching them, those who anyone would say they do not have a good intention, this would lead to much knowledge being lost and much good being lost. Likewise, along with the fact that it's hoped that the intention will be rectified whenever he finds the, the delight and the benefit of knowledge. Whenever he finds the delight and benefit of knowledge. So he says, السلف, And some of the salaf they have, they have mentioned. And uh, عالم, this has been narrated uh, from Ma'mar ibn Rashid. Uh, rahimahullah, he, did, he died in 154. He's the great scholar of uh, Abdul Razak al-Sanani. Uh, Ma'mar ibn Rashid. He says, here, and he, and th That is Ma'mar ibn Rashid. Rahimahullah, طلبنا العلم لغير الله فأبى أن يكون إلا لله he said that we sought knowledge for other than Allah. And then the knowledge refused except to be for the sake of Allah. Except to be for the sake of Allah. It's been narrated on, another, uh, on a number of other, uh, others from the scholars of hadith likewise. He says now, He's, he's saying the meaning of this is that in the final outcome, the intention uh, wound up being for the sake of Allah. Azawajal. What is intended here by not having the intention for the sake of Allah, not necessarily having a bad intention? And because there's one thing by, by, from having a, a bad intention, meaning a person, he intends to harm someone and the likes like this. And some people, they seek knowledge in, the, in this manner or they carry knowledge in this manner. They have a foul intention. Or for example, the people of desires and the people of winds, they have foul intention in seeking knowledge and they'll learn the doubts to spread them and the likes like this, and they'll learn the avenues of innovation in order to spread them and to confuse the Muslims and the likes like this, like the Zanadi Qadid, yani in the early days. So this is something that 
It's not included here. This is not intended. What is intended here? But they did not have the intention for Allah. Meaning when in the beginning they started seeking knowledge. For example, they will see a lot of people seeking knowledge or they'll find knowledge to be something beautiful or something that they find it that is nice or that they like it. They like knowledge itself. So therefore they go on that path or they see a lot of people uh, who they admire, who are from the people of knowledge or the students of knowledge or they sit in the gatherings of knowledge and they hear some things that is nice. So therefore they just start seeking knowledge because this is something that they like. It's something that is good. And the likes like this, or maybe maybe even and he has a, a sort of a bad intention that he wants to, to be known or he wants to memorize for this reason or, or, or that. But he's saying now the one who is truthful and he continues seeking knowledge, the knowledge will refuse except to be for the sake of Allah. And this means that whenever he starts sitting with the people of knowledge and he starts listening to the narrations, from the first of the narrations he will hear, <laughs> he, will, he, will, he, will, he will hear the likes of these narrations. And then he will start learning the details of the intention. And then he will start learning the dangers of showing off. And the likes like this. And then, uh, for example, the hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood by Abi Hurairah, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, من تعلم علما مما يبتغى به وجه الله لم يتعلمه إلا لغرض من الدنيا لم يره عرف الجنة أي رائحتها he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that whoever learns some knowledge, that's uh, the knowledge that should be, that the face of Allah should be shot, sought by way of any legislative knowledge that should be for the sake of Allah alone. And he doesn't learn it except to gain a worldly gain, a worldly benefit. Then he will not smell the scent of paradise. He will not smell the scent of paradise. So there's a great threat here. So whenever the students of knowledge, they begin going deeper in knowledge and sitting in the gatherings of knowledge and mixing with the students that are stronger and listening to the likes of these narrations and getting the interpretation of this, then at this time, the, the sincerity will come to them and they'll rectify their intention and this is what is intended. So many times those who begin in the beginning of the affair of seeking knowledge, they're not, a, they're not aware of the details of knowledge and they're not aware of the details of the intention and they're not aware of the dangers of these affairs. But if, if they continue, and uh, if, if they continue, then insha'Allah, the, the, the intention will be rectified and will be corrected and in, the process, in the process of learning. So one, he will not turn away from that. And likewise, one, he will not say that himself, well, I'm not going to seek knowledge because I have a bad intention. La, he will not, this is from the tricks of shaitan. This is from the tricks of the devil. And the likes like this, whether a person, he will seek knowledge. And uh, there is a certain type of knowledge, as we have seen in the beginning of this treatise, that's an obligation for everybody to learn, and no one would be excused from that. So he will not be able to say, I have a bad intention, or my intention is not correct, I can't get myself together, I'm not going to seek knowledge, and he will remain upon ignorance, and his, trans his buyings, and, buyings and, and selling and transactions will be wrong, and he will get money in the wrong manner, or he will divorce or get married in a foul way because he doesn't learn, or his creed will be corrupted with the claims that he's not going to learn because his intention is wrong. All of this is from the tricks uh, and the traps of, of the devil, of the devil. Even if it was not obligatory knowledge, he will not listen to this affair. Whether he will leave that and he will pursue the knowledge. And he will strive against his soul. And he will hope that Allah Azza will provide him with a good intention. Or provide him with a good intention. From the means of that is to supplicate and to call Allah Azza wa Jal. And from the supplications of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you say, Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Wa zakiha anta khayru man zakaha. Anta khayru man zakaha. Anta waliuha mulaha. And other than that from... The narrations that are similarly like this. After this, likewise, he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the same narration of Zayd ibn Arqam, in Sahih Muslim, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min ilman la yanfa' wa min qalbin la yakshah wa min nafsin la tashba' wa min da'wata la yustajabu laha. So he would ask for Allah to purify his heart and to purify his soul. And then he would also seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that's not beneficial. So from the knowledge that's not beneficial is that beneficial knowledge that is intended by way of it, the worldly life. The worldly life. So again, then to seek their protection with Allah from that and to beg him to rectify the affair and then to strive. And then to strive. After this, the author, he says, And so he says it is incumbent for the teacher to discipline the student. To discipline the student yani little by little. To discipline him little by little with the lofty manners and etiquettes. With the legislative manners and etiquettes. That he will go, he will discipline him beginning with the manners that are most important and most important. 
beginning with the manners that are incumbent first and foremost and then little by little it's not to, to, to be too harsh on him or to, he, to be heavy on him or to run him off in the likes like this and he says also to encourage him and to discipline him with uh, pleasing conduct and behavior and encouraging the student to be sincere and to be truthful and to have a good intention so if the student uh, has maybe a bad intention or he's unaware of these affairs and he has a, he's been given success to an upright teacher, the first thing the teacher is going to remind him about is to be sincere and to help him rectify that affair. So this is also another benefit from having a teacher. The teacher, he's aware of these issues and he's going to help cultivate the student upon these affairs and remind him of the dangers of, of showing off and to teach him about the avenues and the ways that the showing off can grow in the heart and seeking knowledge specifically. And again, this is yani, a clarification of that great narration that we took before. The narration of Abdullah ibn Shawdan. Rahimahullah ta'ala, what did he say? مِن نِعْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَلَى الشَّابِ وَالْعَجَمِ أَنْ يُوَفَّقَا إِلَى صَاحِبِ السُنَّةِ يَحْمِلُهُمَا عَلَيْهَا يَحْمِلُهُمَا عَلَيْهَا Now he said that from the, from the greatest blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal for a youth, for a, for a young person, or for a new Muslim, is that they're given success to a person of the Sunnah. Given success, you need to learn and to accompany a person of the Sunnah because he will teach them and carry them and help them and aid them upon the Sunnah. And aid them upon the Sunnah because a person who is young or a person who is a new Muslim, many times they're affected in a major way by the first people that come to them. By the first people that come to them. And you'll find likewise, even if, for example, a person, he, the first one to get to him is an innovator or somebody of deviation. And then later on after that, maybe Allah will guide him away from that. But if he's not careful, many times some leftover remnants of those ideologies and those methodologies previously, they'll stay with him. They'll stay with him. You'll find this today in many problems. Some of the students, maybe before they were in, the different, they were in different groups or affected by, by different parties and the likes like this. And then Allah guided them to the correct path of the Salafiyya, but they have some of those ideologies remaining behind them. Or they have some of those foul conducts and mannerisms that are not proper and they carry that along with them. Rather, this all has to be purified and left. All that has to be purified and left. So from the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jalla, as a person, he will miss all of that. And he will be guided from the very beginning to a person of the sunnah that will cultivate him upon the correct way and save him from all that entirely by the grace of Allah. But even if a person, he was found or tried by some of these affairs, if he was truthful and sincere, he can purify his soul from that and free his soul from that entirely and be upright upon the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by the permission of Allah. But this is just, again, showing the virtue of the teacher. And likewise, the great importance of having a teacher. So now he says, And likewise, it's incumbent for the teacher to encourage the student to, uh, to strive to obtain knowledge. And that he remind him of the virtue of knowledge. And likewise, the virtue of the people of knowledge. This is very important. And this is from the methodology of the, of the, of the teacher. And likewise, it's from the methodology of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is the one who clarified the status of the, of the people of knowledge. He is the one, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who clarified the knowledge. This is something that Allah Himself, He encouraged in His book. And the like site is many, many verses where knowledge is praised and the people of knowledge are praised. And many, many narrations likewise where knowledge is praised. And the virtue of that is clarified and the people of knowledge likewise are praised. So therefore it's incumbent for the teacher to cultivate the student upon this and to remind him of this affair. The virtues of knowledge, the benefit of knowledge, the good outcome of the people of knowledge, the high rank and the high status of those who are sincere and, and seeking knowledge and carrying knowledge and applying knowledge and abiding by knowledge and teaching knowledge, the great reward that they have. This is something incumbent upon them. This is something incumbent upon them. And uh, in doing this, a person he has to be sincere and truthful. And again, he will not conceal or he will not hide or he will, not, uh, he will not deceive or be deceptive in praising the scholars or praising the knowledge. Like some people they do today, they will maybe praise the scholars, but they only praise one or two that praise them. And any other scholar that didn't praise them, they will not mention him. Even there will be great, great scholars. Great, great, great scholars, but they have no mention from them or no praise from them. So they'll praise some little students of knowledge and the likes like this because they praise them. So they'll only mention the people that praise them in order to get praised. This is a foul way. They raise up the people and praise the people so they can get praised. But rather a person of knowledge who is truthful and he's calling the people to the deen of Allah, he will encourage the people to follow all of the scholars, not one or two of them. 
And he would not make it, the people believe that there's only one or two scholars, scholars in the world that the whole Ummah has to refer to. And anybody who didn't refer to him, he's not upon the right path. Or anybody who opposed him, he's not upon the right path. Or he's an error, or he's in a mistake. And this is something that is found. This is something that the people of knowledge, they do not do that. We didn't learn that or see that from any one of the people of knowledge. Like this, they will not try to make you believe that there's only one shaykh you have to take from. There's only one shaykh you have to take from. La, there's a number uh, of scholars who are upright and noble, who are upright and noble from the scholars of the Sunnah. So a believer, a teacher, whenever he is encouraging the people to honor the knowledge and to honor the people of knowledge, this is his manner. He will, he will, he will sometimes mention the fatwa of Shaykh Mugbil, or sometimes he'll mention the fatwa of Shaykh Fozan, or sometimes he'll mention, mention the fatwa of Shaykh Arabani, or sometimes he'll mention the fatwa of Shaykh Uthaymin, or other than that from the scholars and like this. And this is what we learned from Shaykh Suleiman al rahidi and this is what he advised directly. And we used to see that from him. We used to see that from him. He'll mention the fatwa of this scholar, or the fatwa of that scholar, or the benefit of this scholar. And the like cite this, clarifying that uh, the people of the Sunnah, they have ulama, a number of them. No doubt, the people of the Sunnah are few. And the scholars of the Sunnah are fewer. But, alhamdulillah, there are a number of them that are alive today. And they are present today. And they are busy today. And we can benefit from them. And we should not single out one over the other. Claiming that's an obligation to refer to one of them over the other. This is not from the right way. Nor is it from cultivation upon the Sunnah of the Prophet So no doubt this is from the beautiful way of an upright teacher of the Sunnah. To encourage the people to uh, be concerned with knowledge and to clarify the virtues of knowledge and to plant the seed of knowledge in their heart and the love for knowledge and the preference for knowledge by clarifying the beauty of knowledge and likewise the honor and respect of, uh, for the people of knowledge to plant that in the hearts of the believers this is very important to know the people of knowledge to know them by names and uh, even in these days uh, to know them by their voices because we have audios for example and this is a beautiful way. A person, for example, maybe he never met Shaykh Uthaymin, but he knows his voice whenever he speaks and whenever he's teaching. If he hears that, oh, that's Shaykh Uthaymin. Or if he hears this voice here, he knows, oh, that's Shaykh Al-Abani, Rahimahullah. Or whenever he hears the voice of one of the scholars previously, or those who are alive today, he will know them. Especially in these lands, since we can't be with them directly, but we can benefit from the means that we have today of communication, and we can listen to them and benefit from them. And this is also an indication of the great importance of showing concern and care of learning the Arabic language. Learning the Arabic language for the youth, for the young boys and the young girls, for the elders, for the old ones and the young ones to learn the Arabic language so they can benefit from these means. So they can benefit from these means. Even if they can't go sit in the Prophet's masjid, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they can still sit in their own house and listen to the, the class directly every day after Fajr or every day, every day after Asr. And over there, over there. So, any, but here it will be in the daytime or in the afternoon time or evening time. And there's a class. There's classes from the great scholars of the day like Shaykh Suleiman and Shaykh Abdul Razak and the likes like that and other than them likewise that are broadcast live. Shaykh Fozen, classes that are broadcast live, classes that are recorded. And to benefit from the scholars any, directly any in this manner from the means of communication. From the means of cum communication. This is something that is, that is, very, that is very beneficial. That likewise, the manner of doing this will be with justice, with knowledge and with justice, and without, without desires and without whims and without oppression. So we will not encourage one scholar over the other. Or we will not belittle the scholars and talk bad about them. The scholars that it's known, they're from the scholars of the Sunnah. The scholars that are known from the scholars of the Sunnah for years. For years we have known nothing but good about them and their, their, their beards have, have grown gray and teaching knowledge and spreading knowledge and clarifying the sunnah and defending the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam refuting shirk and innovation and the likes like this. The, the names that we know, the names that we know, we, we honor them and respect them and if they ever have any differences amongst themselves then this is not for you and I to deal with. This is not for the students of knowledge to deal with. This is for the scholars to deal with, the people uh, of knowledge and experience, that they would deal with that and we will leave that alone. And if any one of them ever makes a mistake, a scholar of the Sunnah, that we know he's upright upon the Sunnah, he makes a mistake, then we do not follow his mistake and we, make it, and we excuse him for that. And we keep his honor and respect. We do not drop him and treat him like an innovator. We do not drop him and treat him like an innovator. We understand this. This is something that's very important. And unfortunately, many people, they're contrary to that. And this is also because of desires. And they want you to follow them and for them to use you and to manipulate you. And the likes like this. And they use nice slogans 
that are really karimatul haq yuradu biha al batin. You have to add, add a kabir, add a kabir. And the likes like the major scholars, the major scholars, but they really want you to blindfold on one scholar who, yani, who, who, who they have a connection with. One scholar who they have a connection with. This is falsehood and this is not right. This is falsehood and this is not right. Rather, a person of the Sunnah, he will guide the people to all of the people of knowledge and let the benefit come. And then even from the people of knowledge, when there's major affairs that occur, only some of them speak about that. Only some of them will speak about that. Whenever the major affairs occur that touch the whole ummah, like affairs of jihad and bloodshed and so on and so forth, or the affairs related to coronavirus and the likes like this that touch the whole ummah, that's the whole ummah. You'll not find the, 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 all of the scholars talking about this. Rather, they'll be quiet. They'll be, even Sheikh Abdul Masjid, he was quiet after this affair occurred. And he's from the great scholars, and he let the board of major scholars speak. But now we have some little students of knowledge, or even some individuals who are just translators, and they speak about these affairs, and they get involved in these affairs, and they spread fitness in these affairs, and they cause trouble and separation and dissension in these affairs. And it's all uh, foolishness. It's all foolishness. If we don't have knowledge of these issues and we're not aware of this, we'll be affected by that. And then we'll be turned away from the straight path or at very minimum we'll be preoccupied from that which is most beneficial. We'll be preoccupied from that which is most beneficial. So to have knowledge of these affairs is very important. This is from learning the likes of these books. This is from learning the likes of these books. So he says, وَيَنْبَغِي أَنْ يَحْنُوَ عَلَيْهِ وَيَعْتَنِيَ بِمَصَارِهِ كَاعْتِنَائِهِ بِمَصَارِهِ نَفْسِهِ وَوَلَدِهِ وَيُجْرِيهِ مَجْرَى وَلَدِهِ فِالشَّفَقَةِ عَلَيْهِ وَالِحْتِمَامِ بِمَصَالِحِهِ So he says now, likewise it's incumbent, uh, likewise it's incumbent for him to be kind to him and to be merciful. And for him to, to, to have affection for him. And to be concerned about his feelings, to be, current, to be concerned about his situation, about his circumstance. He would not just you know, teach him and then leave him and not have care. Like he would look out for him and he, to the best of his ability, be, care, be, be concerned about you know, his situation. And he would look out for him the way he looks out for his child. And he would treat him the way that he treats his own child. And he, this is from, uh, and he, with regards to mercy and to kindness and for looking out for his affairs. So likewise, this is something that is very important for the teachers to be aware of, to look after their students. And if they know that some of them, they are in need of uh, special attention or advice, or the likes like this, that they will do their best to help them, either, direct, either directly or indirectly. Either they will go to them or they will request for somebody else to go to them. And the likes like this. And if they, will, they will have concern about their students. And they will have concern about, uh, about those who sit in their gatherings. This reminds me now of a statement of Ibn Abbas and radiallahu anhuma. Wallahi, it's a beautiful statement. When I first read it, I said, I love this statement. He said, Akrabu nas alayya jirisi. Akrabu nas alayya jirisi. He said, the most honorable and noble people with me are those who sit with me in my gatherings. And those who study with me. Those who come as the ones who study with me. And the, most, the ones who I honor the most and I have the most respect for are those who sit in my gatherings and study and learn with me. And this is and no doubt, the people who sit with you and study with you and review knowledge with you and go over the knowledge with you and you sit there listening to the verses of Allah being recited and the interpretation of those verses and the benefits and the rulings derived from there and the narrations of the Prophet وسلم, and the benefits and, and the rulings derived from there and you're learning your religion together and you're growing together and your deen, you're becoming stronger in faith and the gatherings and the lifestyle these, these are the best these are your best friends these are your best friends these are these, these people and you have the most honor for them and you have the best thoughts about them so this is something that is very beneficial that a teacher he'll be concerned for his students he'll be concerned for his students may Allah make us better likewise he says he says also likewise he would excuse his student the teacher would excuse his student for his bad manners or for being rude any at certain times any whenever these affairs happen sometimes any and this is important here any uh, he says here yeah that uh, he says that he will excuse him for some of his bad manners or his rudeness that will come from him sometimes sometimes so this is an important point here that we benefit for the teacher specifically but likewise in general for ourselves amongst our brothers because we have people that we see daily our families likewise and we know about them that they have lofty and good manners or generally whenever we speak with them everything's fine and everything's calm but every now and then something will happen to them and they'll change and they'll be rude or they'll be harsh or they'll be short and the likes like this and we shouldn't hold that hold them to account for that 
whether we should look for uh, uh, an excuse for them, like he's saying here. The teacher, he'll look for an excuse for a student. Whenever these affairs occur, sometimes. So the person who's known generally that he has good manners and that he's nice and that he's kind and that he's upright on noble conduct, every now and then he slips, every now and then he says something wrong, or every now and then his behavior is not according to what it is normally, and the likes like this, then you excuse him for that. And you, and you make an excuse, maybe he was tired, maybe he had a bad day, maybe something happened at home, maybe he was hungry, maybe, 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 maybe like this. But you shouldn't say, oh, he doesn't like me no more. And cut ties with him immediately. It's one time. A whole month he's kind and nice. Or a whole lifetime of kindness and ni niceness in one time. Here and there he's harsh or he's rude or he's tired or he's short or he has something to do so he rushes away. And then you cut him off or shaitan comes between you because of this affair. La, la. The teacher will not do that. And likewise a believer he will not do that. And likewise a believer he will not, he will not do that. So he's saying now that he will excuse him for that. And because every individual he's exposed He's exposed to de deficiencies and shortcomings. He's exposed to, de to deficiencies and shortcomings. So there's a difference between the person who is rude. And he is known he's a rude individual. He has bad manners. And he, this is what's known from him, from dealing with him. And from somebody who rudeness comes from him or bad manners appear from him from time to time. So this one, the, the first one, you have to teach him. You have to be patient with him likewise. But you have to work on him and try to refine him and to clarify to him the right way and to direct him to the good way and to show him that what he's upon is the wrong way in the best manner. As for the other one who only that happens sometimes, then this one you just excuse him and you overlook that. And that Amash, he said, at Taghaf, what you'll feel kathira min ash-shar. At Amash, he died in the 148, Suleiman ibn Mihran, from, from the scholars of Hadith. He says, that by overlooking certain things, this puts out much evil, any much evil. It could be a major problem if every time somebody had, uh, was short in their speech, or every time somebody didn't text back right away, or every time somebody didn't answer the phone call on the first ring, and then like I said, this, you get mad at them and you hold them to account. And sometimes you have to overlook these affairs. Or if every time the wife yani, has a sharp tongue, or every time the husband, he was short in the rights, and then like I said, this, everybody wants their rights every time do in full, nobody's going to be happy. Nobody's going to be happy. So sometimes you have to overlook these affairs and uh, find a better time to correct them or even just overlook them entirely if it's something that can be overlooked in the life like this. So this is from the beautiful, the beautiful advice, the beautiful advice. We continue after salah, inshallah. Hada wa sallallahu wa nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.